Hey everybody, I'm Sam Gross from electricbikereport.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the Blix Aveni Skyline. This is the newest version of the Blix Aveni. It's a Dutch style electric commuter bike and we're going to put it through a number of tests today to see how it does. <laughs> So this is actually the last of several Blix bikes that Electric Bike Report has actually been kind of reviewing all at once. And this is the second one that I've tested personally. And one thing I've noticed about Blix bikes is they're just kind of elegant, especially for an electric budget commuter bike. So this bike all in costs less than $2,000 and it has one of the best paint jobs of any bike I've seen. It's also powered by a 500 watt rear hub motor. It has a decently large 614 watt hour battery and name brand components through and through. So this bike has a nice and relaxed geometry. It's a little bit more upright, but it doesn't, it doesn't sacrifice pedaling efficiency. It still pedals really, really nicely. One thing it also has is it's a mid-step bike, so it's gonna be a little bit easier to get on than some of the more aggressive high-step bikes. And overall, it's just a very comfortable, very well-working electric commuter and city bike. So the Blix Aveni Skyline comes with a 500 watt rear hub motor. And it's a very similar motor to the one that we tested that's on the Vika Plus Flex folding bike as well. But it's a very nice, very controlled, and actually very quiet rear hub motor. It's, it's actually markedly more quiet than some of the other models that we've tested. But it has a very calm power profile on the higher pedal assist settings like PAS5 for example, it has a really good amount of get up and go and it'll get close to its class 2 max speed of 20 miles an hour very very quickly and then hold that speed well. And the throttle feels a little bit more mellower, it doesn't have so much get up and go off the line, but one of the true tests of how well an electric bike performs is how well it climbs hill, which in other words is how much torque does this motor have. So Blix doesn't actually publish the torque of their motors. But, you know, we've ridden this thing up hills and we can tell you that it's not the torquiest of the bunch. It does the job very, very well, it feels very smooth, and the motor doesn't make a ton of noise. But to give you guys at home a good idea of how well this thing performs in the real world on hills, we're going to take it up a hill test, up a local steep that we call Hell Hole. It's about a third of a mile long, 12% on average. We're going to do it twice. The first test is going to be on throttle only, and the second test is going to be on max PAS, so the maximum pedal assist level, PAS5, plus the help of my legs. Let's see how it does. So this is our throttle only hill test on the Blix of any Skyline. It's a 500 watt rear hub motor, and uh, let's see how she goes. So one thing I've noticed riding this bike is that the throttle only doesn't quite have the acceleration that you get on pedal assist. When you pedal, it's a really quick accelerating bike, but it still accelerates nicely on just the throttle. Here we are, first kind of steep section. It kicks up again when we go around this corner. The bike's doing fine, down to about 10 miles an hour. really doing well here. One thing that's really impressive about these Blix bikes is that even though they're not the quickest hill climbers, they really make no noise, like a lot of motors at that point in the hill, which is one of the steeper sections, start to vibrate or groan or make like a kind of uncomfortable mechanical noise. And these bikes don't do that at all. They, they slow down, but they really don't sound like they're under that much stress, which is impressive kind of confidence inspiring too another steep pitch here this is the one that will typically uh, stop a lot of bikes on throttle only but the Aveni makes it over pretty much fine heading towards the top if you can hear that little bit of noise it's actually the disc brake it's not the motor And it's cruising, we're almost at the top. I do have to say I'm actually 
really impressed uh, with how well that light just did. We're not quite to the top yet, but we're through the worst of it. Um, yeah, good showing from the Aveni. So round two for the Blitz of any Skyline on Hellhole. This time we're going on a pedal assist five. And away we go. So one thing I do very much dig about the Aveni is it's Revo shift grip shifter. Back in the day, grip shifters used to be like the hot thing on mountain bikes. Now you see them a lot on these kind of cruiser style bikes. And it makes cycling through the gears on these steep hills pretty nice. But this bike's cruising. Been able to stay at a mostly talking pace. I'm down into the bottom gear right now. The bike's going to gain some momentum here. So Blix bikes are not the torquiest motors, at least they're 500 watt motors. They really do benefit from a little bit of pedaling. You don't have to put too much down, but on steeper hills, it doesn't make, take much from your legs to really make the difference on steeper sections. So on our hill test, the Blix of any Skyline performed decently well for a motor that we would characterize as not being the most torquiest. So it cleared the hill both times, but on throttle only, it made it to the top in 1 minute 57 seconds with an average speed of 9.3 miles an hour. And then on pedal assist 5, with the help of my legs, it did it in 1 minute and 44 seconds with an average speed of 10.4 miles an hour. So these are not blazing fast times up this test hill, but honestly, it's pretty impressive. And that's for a couple of different reasons. One, again, not the torquiest motor we've tested, but it made it up really without any sort of groaning noises. We sometimes hear some very kind of uncomfortable mechanical noises coming from these rear hub motors, especially during the throttle test. The Blix was dead quiet on the way up and it never really acted like it wanted to not make it. It just did it at a slower pace. Another thing that's important to note about this test hill is we choose it for a reason, and that is because it is kind of an extreme example of a hill, especially a hill that you might find in a city or an urban environment like with this bike. Another thing that is kind of important to note about this bike is it does really well with just a little bit of help pedaling with your legs, like especially on the PAS5 setting. If you can use your legs just ever so gently to add a little bit of additional torque into the rear wheel, the bike does wonderfully well. It really benefits from just a little bit of pedaling. And one thing that kind of helps with that is the Blix's Shimano drivetrain. So this thing comes with a Shimano Revo shift grip shift style shifter. It's a seven speed drivetrain and it comes with the Shimano Acera rear derailleur, which it's an awesome, it's a name brand component. It's something we love to see, especially in this day and age when name, name brand drivetrain components are so hard to get. Blix is still shipping their bikes with Shimano componentry. It's a really solid setup, especially on a more budget bike. It's a component set that we used to see before the pandemic and the pandemic kind of bike component shortages all the time on these bikes. They're old reliable, they really rarely ever fail you, and they just work. So we love to see that. So what you get when you pair that decently large 614 watt hour battery with a bike that rolls relatively efficient, efficiently and doesn't take much energy to roll is you get a really good range. So we test range on e-bikes in two different ways. The first is we do a range test on the maximum pedal assistance where we just ride the bike on PAS5 until it dies. 
and then we'll also do another range test on a much lower setting. So we subjectively choose the lowest setting that the bike feels like an e-bike, where we can really kind of feel the bike starting to give us some assistance. And on the Aveni, that was pedal assistance level two. So on the pedal assistance level two test, this bike went for just shy of 53 miles before it died, which is really impressive. That is a very long range. Blix actually only claims that this bike is capable of a 45 mile range. So this went much farther than that. And then on the maximum pedal assist range test, so PAS5, this bike went for 35.5 miles before it died, which is incredible considering that this is a sub $2,000 bike with a 500 watt rear hub motor and a battery that's not exuberantly large. 614 watt hours is big, but it's not just like extraordinary. So this bike is very efficient, it rolls well, and battery life is not gonna be something that you really need to worry about. So to get an idea of how well the Blix of any comes to a stop, we've come to a local parking lot and we're gonna put it through a brake test. And how we do this test is we set out cones five feet apart for 25 feet, and then we run the bike at the cones at its maximum motor, excuse me, throttle assisted speed of 20 miles an hour, jam on the brakes as hard as we can in kind of an emergency stop, and then take the average of that emergency stop five times. So this bike comes with a set of mechanical disc brakes. They're 160 millimeter rotors, and they're from a name brand, they're Tektro Ares. And these are brakes we've tested quite a bit. They actually perform very nicely for mechanical disc brakes. So I'm very curious to see how this bike stops. It's not very heavy, and it does feel like it has some good stopping power in the testing I've done so far. So let's see how it goes. So like the old fail safes that they are, these mechanical Tektro Ares disc brakes actually did really, really well. The Blix of any Skyline came to a stop on average in just a little bit over 15 feet and eight inches. And of all of the brake tests we have conducted here at Electric Bike Report, that puts it just a little bit better than our median result of 15 feet, 11 inches. So that's a really nice result from this affordable budget priced bike. So, Again, hydraulic disc brakes are almost always our preference, but those don't always work out on these budget, more affordable priced bikes. Hydraulic disc brakes are more expensive, and honestly, some of the cheaper versions of them just don't work that well. We love seeing good quality name brand mechanical disc brakes like what Blix has specced the Aveni with because they are trustworthy, and when they're tuned right, they stop very, very well. So one of the final tests we conduct at Electric Bike Report is what we call the circuit test. And it's where we take this bike around the closest thing we can get to a closed circuit. It's about a mile loop. There's four corners, a very small hill in there, and there's no stop signs. So we get to kind of let the bike roll on its own. And we take the bike around this circuit six different times. And we do one lap for each pedal assist level, plus an additional lap with the motor entirely off. And what this information tells us is how the bike performs in each of its five different pedal assist levels. Why this matters is because that is how you really tailor how much assistance the motor is giving you. You really want to be able to see some discernible differences between each pedal assistance level, especially when it comes to average speed. And the Blix of any Skyline does a nice job of doing that. We see a jump of about a mile, maybe a little bit more, per between each pedal assistance level. The one area where we saw this bike not doing that was on the very first pedal assist level, PAS1. That's where we saw less than a mile an hour improvement over the lap with no motor at all. So what that tells us is that that first pedal assist level doesn't give you a whole lot of assistance, which is pretty normal on a bike like this. It also could be because this bike just pedals very well on its own. It doesn't take much energy to get a little bit of improvement. So a little bit of an additional, additional help from the motor doesn't show up too much in our test. So the Aveni Skyline is a class two e-bike, meaning that it's pedal assist and throttle is limited to 20 miles an hour before the motor stops assisting you. And on the PAS level five lap, so the fastest lap around our circuit, 
This bike did it with an average speed of 19.1 miles an hour, which is right up against that class two 20 mile an hour limit, which is means this bike is really using all of the speed that it has available to it. So the Blitz Aveni has a pretty standard cockpit for that sub few thousand dollar city and urban commuting bike. It's got the Revashift shifter, which is actually probably the most unique thing. It's a grip style shifter, so you just twist it back and forth. It's got seven gears. You got your regular Tektro brake levers, a bell attached to it. This is the touchpad. So these two buttons control your pedal assist settings. And then this is your on and off switch. On the left side, you've also got the thumb throttle, which I definitely prefer the thumb throttles over the twist shifters. And then you've also just got a very standard kind of run of the mill. Sounds a little bit uh, aggressive, but I would describe it as a run of the mill uh, display that we find on affordable e-bikes. The one thing I will say about this display is that even though it is fairly standard issue for affordable e-bikes, it's probably one of the easiest to read of any that we've ever tested. Like there are some nicer ones out there. Aventin, for example, has a really, really nice display on some of their $2,000 e-bikes. But I mean, these fairly standard ones are just simple and easy and straightforward, which at this price point, I'm always really a big fan of things that just work. So one of the things the Blix of any Skyline really has going for it is its frame. Even aside from its affordable price point, aside from its solid component package, it just has a really beautifully done frame. It actually reminds me a lot of like the paint job that you'd see on a classic car. The paint just looks thick and it's shiny and it's clearly been done with a lot of care and attention to detail. So not only is the frame painted, but you get painted metal fenders and then a matching painted rear rack as well. And it's hard to really capture how nice it all looks in video and photo, but it really is kind of a step above what we would typically expect from a sub $2,000 e-bike. It just kind of is very beautiful. As we've mentioned before, it's a Dutch style e-bike. It's got a mid-step frame design, making it a little bit easier to get on and off of. And it also has some kind of cruiser style characteristics, even though this is a city and urban commuting style e-bike. It gives you a very nice upright riding position. The handlebars have a good sweep back to them. But while I do love the Blix of Any's frame, it's actually one of the only areas I have gripes. And these are kind of specific to someone who's gonna be tall like me. So Blix says this version of the Aveni Skyline should fit riders all the way up to six foot two inches tall. I'm personally six foot one inches tall and I actually had a hard time fitting on this bike well. The biggest hindrance was actually its seat posts and luckily this is something that's easy to fix but the seat post that comes stock with the bike is not tall enough for someone with as long of legs as me to get a full leg extension and this overall made the bike feel just a little bit cramped. Luckily, this is something that if you are taller, you can take to your local bike shop. They can solve this problem for a relatively small amount of money, and probably you will leave the shop with the bike, not having to leave it with them. But it's an easy fix. And then my last gripe is actually in relation to these nicely painted fenders. So I'm a huge fan of metal fenders. They're just a little bit sturdier. They hold their shape better, and I personally think they look better but the only downside to them is the fact that they do make a little bit more noise. So plastic fenders, they, when they rattle, they're pretty, rattle very silently. Metal fenders, you can hear kind of a twang or a clang when you hit a bump or if you get a rock stuck up in there. It's something to keep in mind. Again, I don't think it's a deal breaker, but they do just make a little bit of noise. It's personally a trade-off that I'm willing to make for having metal fenders. In addition to a nicely painted frame and an easy to get on and off of frame, Blix has also made a very well-balanced bike. Part of that is gonna be in thanks to having the battery very low set on the seat post. It keeps the heaviest part of the bike low to the ground, giving you a lower center of gravity. But the Aveni Skyline just feels very, very balanced. It handles very predictably, goes around corners very smoothly. It's not a bike that's gonna be, you know, very conducive to racing or going fast or railing through corners. But if you're looking for something that's not gonna give you any surprises, that's gonna nicely handle bumps in the road, this is a great bike for that. They also chose to not do a suspension fork on the front of this bike. Actually, I don't think there's any Blix bike that comes with a suspension fork, but this bike still does a really nice job of absorbing bumps and road vibrations. You know, a lot of people associate full rigid bikes with a ride that's gonna be a little bit more rigid and uncomfortable. It's not the case with this bike. It actually is very, very smooth riding. I've been 
overall incredibly impressed with it. So if you've liked the Blix of any Skyline and you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get updates on when we do more bike reviews like this one. If you also want to learn a little bit more about this bike, there's a link in the description below this video that's going to have a little bit more of a thorough write-up that has all of our test results there for you. So if you want to compare this bike against something else that you're looking at, it's all there in that one space. So for Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross. Thank you so much for watching.